Welcome to Mark My Words on Music. I'm Mark Evans with a look at some of the most beautiful music of the day. Welcome to Mark My Words on Music, a look at the most exciting new recordings of the day. When we speak of Broadway musical theater productions, we usually speak of hits and flops. The common assumption is that the hits were good and the flops were not. But those familiar with the inner workings of Broadway are well aware that shows can become hits for many reasons, not the least of which is the amount of money used to promote them. Shows may also not sustain a long run for reasons unrelated to their scores. It's easier than most people realize for a great show to fade into oblivion. But some shows refuse to fade. Such a show is The Golden Apple, with music composed by Jerome Ross and written by John Latouche. And what a show it was. It was daring, experimental, and unique when it opened in 1954. The Golden Apple has just been released on its first full-length recording, a two-disc set on the PS Classics CD label. Jerome Ross called it an opera for America. No one had ever seen anything quite like it. Instead of spoken dialogue, the Golden Apple featured dialogue that was sung through. The setting is Angel's Roost, near Mount Olympus, in turn-of-the-century Washington State. If Mount Olympus sounds vaguely Greek, your imagination isn't running away with you. Moross and Latouche were inspired by the Iliad and the Odyssey, the classic works by Homer. This time, Ulysses is a soldier returning to his wife Penelope from the Spanish-American War. Helen of Troy is a farmer's daughter who works her feminine wiles on Paris, now a traveling salesman. The second act follows them to Rhododendron, the big city that offers temptation and disappointment. Maross is justly celebrated for his uniquely American style, evident in his ballets, art songs, chamber music, and, of course, film scores ranging from the big country to the cardinal. Latouche is remembered as a poet and lyricist whose words displayed wit and literacy while always managing to entertain. The first act features the tale of Paris's abduction of Helen and the events that drive Ulysses on his fateful journey to war. The second act is derived from the Iliad and the Odyssey. Maross's musical mood changes in the second act as the action switches from the pastoral small town to the high energy of a metropolitan environment. Scylla and Charybdis are converted into stockbrokers, while the tempting sirens sing their siren song in the style of a South Seas melody. Maross delights in writing waltzes, dances, ragtime pieces, and the popular music of the day. Lazy Afternoon, the languid melody sung by Helen near the end of the first act, became a hit despite the fate of the original production. It has been sung by a variety of artists for decades. The 1954 season was impressive, with Kismet, Can Can, and Pajama Game all having their premieres. And yet the New York drama critics circle named the Golden Apple Best Musical the first time an off-Broadway production was so honored. While critics praised the show as perhaps the most creative since Oklahoma, business decisions by the producers hampered the move to Broadway. RCA released an original cast album, but it contained only half the score. Happily, the new recording presents the entire score. Susanna Maross Tarjan, the composer's daughter, served as executive producer, and the full orchestra for which Maross wrote has finally been recorded. We can now enjoy the Maross Latouche American Opera. A remarkable fusion of musical comedy and opera with sung dialogue and a Greek chorus, The Golden Apple should be regarded as one of the most creative and unusual works for musical theater. Happily, this very special recording should be a first step. This is Mark Evans asking you, as always, to mark my words on music.
So if you're intent on enjoying some beautiful music, don't forget to mark my words.